Hi, so my name is Sean, and this video is not about me. This is about you. If you're a practitioner of seeing without eyes, so I want to focus on you and getting some important information to you about what might be the next level of development for seeing without eyes. And this is really about sharing information across two different areas of exploration. And what I'm talking about is a journal entry from the Society of Scientific Explorations journal uh, from 2010 that has information that might be interesting to you that has specific instructions for you for what might be the next development um, beyond just seeing things with a blindfold on and might involve moving objects with your mind. And the reason I'm sharing this with you is because something woke me up in the middle of the night two nights ago, just this impulse at three in the morning to make this video and share it with you. And I don't know what that's about, but it hasn't let go of me. So I have to share this with you and let, let things fall where they may. Um, this is also about silos because scientists live in their own silo. Practitioners or psychics live in their own silo. And it's all too often that they don't share enough information. So this is one way for you to get information from the scientific community, specifically from the author of the journal named Dong Shen. And again, this is from 2010. And this is about research that was happening in the 70s, 80s, and 90s in China, which you probably already heard about, about children who could see while blindfolded or with their eyes closed. But this goes a step further, and there's some instructions I'm going to share with you from the journal. But in the detail section below, I'll put a link where you can actually access the journal directly electronically from the Society for Scientific Exploration. That way you can read this yourself. But briefly, these scientists in China, now that we're talking about more than 20, 30 years ago, met with these children who could read little pieces of paper that were folded up and they would put them in their ear and they could close their eyes and they would be able to read what was on the paper or they could tuck the paper under their armpit uh, and be able to read it that way. But the experiments went further where the child or the practitioner, because they taught eventually older people how to do this, they would put a piece of folded paper with some numbers on it, usually about three numbers, inside of a closed container. And this practitioner would focus on it for a while. Sometimes it would take several hours, but they would focus on it until they could perceive the information on the piece of paper inside. And then they would send a command for that piece of paper to leave the container spontaneously. And the paper would leave. And there are records of these experiments in a couple of different books. Um, but this is your opportunity now because what this article talks about is what they have to develop first, which you have already developed if you're doing this. It's called the second consciousness state or the SCS. And that's the ability to perceive with the eyes closed or perceive with the blindfold on. And you've already done it. All of you are doing this. And now I want to just stop and do a special thanks to Rob Freeman and Wendy Gallant because I think of all the teachers of this stuff, They've done the most to break this out into the public view so that people all over the world can learn this. They can partner up through Rob and Wendy's Facebook page, find a training partner, and help each other learn how to develop what this journal calls the second consciousness state. When I first read this, I thought it was a rare ability, but here you are. So many of you of various ages are learning how to do this, and that's so inspiring. So. Really kudos to Rob and Wendy, and I know a lot of other teachers out there are teaching this, so it's wonderful that everyone's spreading the word about this. But So this doesn't stop at just the second consciousness state. The practitioner develops that state where they can perceive, and then they use part of their consciousness to send the command for that object, that piece of paper, to be teleported out of the container. And they've also done it with like dead insects, like a dead fly. Um, I think it was dead, but little insects, they can teleport them out of the container. They've also done experiments where there was a toothpick or a piece of, a very thin piece of metal, like a needle inside. And when the practitioner can perceive it, then he or she sends the command for it to break. And then they open the container and they see that this toothpick or this little piece of metal has actually broken, just as they saw it with their mind, with their second consciousness state or their SCS. So you guys are right there on the cusp of going to the next level. But here are basically the 10 steps that these people applied when training each other in China. Again, this is 20, 30 years ago to do this experiment. First, the researcher would write two or three numbers on a piece of paper, fold it twice uh, to hide the numbers. Step two, the trainee or the practitioner, you would take that folded paper, 
put it in your ear, or your armpit, or just hold it in your hand um, and try to see it. Sometimes they would put their hand inside of a black bag and try and perceive it that way. Of course, you guys have your own way of doing this. Step three, the researcher would ask the trainee to relax and to meditate for five to 10 minutes. So you already know from all the training and tips you've received from Rob and Wendy about how to get more into the right brain state, how to relax, how to let your mind open up. And that's what number three here is talking about. Then in number four, the researcher asks the trainee to focus on the target, the little piece of paper, and do his or her best to mentally see the paper or to see the number or letter on the paper. Step five, the trainee would report the number, the letter, and the color of the ink um, after about five to 30 minutes. That's what it says here. Step six, the trainee would train in this fashion for an hour a day or every other day um, until they're really good at seeing things. And you, so many of you are already doing really well at seeing shapes or letters or numbers. So many of you are already there. Then step seven, the training can be extended up to 30 days or more. Um, of course, many of you have trained for far longer. Of course, Rob and Wendy, you've trained for more than three years, um, which has allowed you to share this valuable information with everyone. Number eight, test the ESP ability with sample targets prepared, which you guys are already doing. Step nine, then training for PK. Here, PK is psychokinesis, which a lot of practitioners also call telekinesis is done in a similar fashion. The target exercise is to cut a wooden match or a thin metal wire into two pieces using the third eye along with mental intention. So that's what I talked about earlier. They would see a, a toothpick or a thin metal wire in their mind's eye and then imagine it breaking or being cut. Step 10, after three months or so of training in the ESP aspect, the successful student will be ready to perform PK experiments. So this is, suggesting that if, you, if you've been doing seeing blindfold for a few months, then you'll be able to progress to doing the psychokinesis or affecting a physical object, putting a break in it, or maybe transporting it outside of the container. So there's, there's more information in the whole journal. So I really recommend that you click on the link in the description in the YouTube section here to find the journal where you can download it electronically for free from the, the society's website. And you can start to practice this on your own. Um, and again, you guys are already so far along. And I think this is a great opportunity to take something that seems to be almost buried in history, in recent history. I don't know how many of you are talking about this, but if you didn't know about it, you know about it now, that this is some way, an interesting way you can extend your ability to something different. And of course, it's up to you or take guidance from your teachers. Um, if it's Rob and Wendy, ask them about it, about when it's an appropriate time to, to try and experiment with that. But if you're already seeing letters and numbers and shapes and colors, this is another option. And I'm, I just wanna share it with you because something in the middle of the night told me to, but also because you might be wondering what's next or what, what else can I do with this? This is the next level. I think, or it's one of several possible next levels. Um, and I'm just so excited for the work you guys are doing. It's tremendous. I'm not doing it myself. I'm involved with other things, but um, I really admire all of you, especially Robin and Wendy for doing this work and getting it out into the world. So thank you and uh, good luck.